up everyone? I am Jamie with 3 littlegoatscom If you're new here, welcome to my channel. We put out random videos every random Wednesday and soaping videos every single Saturday. And today we are kind of combining them. We are combining 3D printing with our soap making, which I'm very excited to do. I do a lot of 3D printing. If you haven't checked out some of my previous videos, I've shown some molds that I've made from Harry Potter for wax melts and how I've failed at some sorting hat soap molds. So today we're going to do something a little bit different. If you've been soaping for a while, you guys have probably seen like the kaleidoscope soaps where you pull this little thing through your soap and it makes a kaleidoscope type effect, which is really, really cool. I don't have a round mold and I really don't want to buy a kaleidoscope pull through thingy. So I decided it seems simple enough. Let's 3D print one. So all I did was went to a free website called Tinkercad where I could design kind of what I wanted on the website and I just exported it as an STL file and then I imported it into the program that I use, I use Simplify 3D to convert that STL file into a g-code that my 3D printer could then read and print out and that left us with these. I did a whole bunch of different ones, I'll show you them a little bit more in detail in the video once we get started but I just decided on some little octagons and some circles and just a bunch of different shapes so I'm going to be testing out one of them that I used in this video so without further ado let's get started all right so I after I got done designing all of my different designs I went ahead and 3d printed them and these are the ones that I came up with so some basic generic ones I've got like a hexagony shape circle this one's just thicker and then I did one I played around with just some different circles and I think this is the one I'm going to actually use today. This is probably the thinnest one because I got impatient and took it off the printer early. I figured I didn't need something quite this thick so I figured this will be perfect. So I'm going to set these aside and I'm going to get this placed into my mold before I start mixing up everything. So I just used some wire to attach to the sides. Ideally, I would have wanted to use some fishing line, but I couldn't find any because that's what happens when you clean out your garage. You can't find any of your stuff anymore. And I do have just a little piece that needs to be cut off. There we go. I don't want any little drops. So I'm happy with the placement of that fits in there perfectly. So I'm going to set that aside. And for colors today, we are using just a combination of Harold's Purple Crayon and Pow Pow Purple. And I put just a little biodegradable glitter in there too. It's not going to make a big difference, but I just wanted to give it a little bit of a sparkle. I got a lot of stuff on my desk today, y'all. And then I've got some Siesta Sunset Orange from Crafter's Choice with a little bit of biodegradable purple in there as well. And then just some good old fashioned titanium dioxide with, again, a little bit of glitter. Not a lot, just a smidge. And then I'm also going to maybe use squeeze bottles to put them in the mold. We'll see how things go if we are going to need them or not. And then of course the fragrance. We are using citrine crystal and quartz. It doesn't have any vanillin in it and it's supposed to behave nicely in cold process soap. So we shall see. Let me get my gloves out. And then we will get to soap making. My oils, I know it's it's freezing in my office right now. My oils are at 69 degrees. And my lye water is at 78. Hmm. I don't want to mix that cold. So I'm actually going to pop my oil in the microwave just to heat it up just a little bit real quick. All right. Not a big, big difference in the temp but it's better than it being in the 60s. Because let me tell you, we went from 80s down to 60s real quick around here, and we're supposed to go back up into the 80s next week. Go figure. So I'm actually going to strain my lye water solution. Set 
set aside. And we're going to bring this just to emulsification. Gorgeous. All right, let go, let go, let go. Let me get a paper towel to set this off to the side because we will be needing that again. All right, so this has just got some oil from where I stuck my stick blender in it real quick to heat the oils. So I'm just going to separate these off. All righty, so in this one, we're going to add our titanium dioxide. And in this one, I'm going to add in our purple. And then in this one, we will add in our orange. Without trying to make a giant mess. But Y'all know me. I am all for the messes. So, yes. Let's give these a quick mix. So, we'll to the side, and we're going to add in our fragrance oils. We're looking awfully Halloween y around here. Bring it. I think this will probably come out after Halloween, but it ha Halloween hasn't occurred yet. So I'm still in spooky season here in real time. I'm not sure when this video will come out though. Spooky season will probably be over by the time this video comes out, but it's okay. I'm not looking to do a Halloween soap. It just so happens I wanted to do these colors and this fragrance oil together. I don't know, maybe I will readjust my schedule for upload and upload this before. Who knows? Oh, that smells so good though. Such a gorgeous scent. All right, now do I want to transfer these two bottles? They are still pretty liquidy. So yeah, we're gonna do that. We're going to transfer these over to these squeezy bottles and try not to make a complete and utter mess. So let's find our lids, plop those on. Hope, hope everything goes as planned. Does it ever around here though? No, it doesn't. All right, so I think I have the most purple, so I'm actually gonna just start by pouring this purple into the bottom. Because I've got a lot of purple going on. Okay, let me just kind of spread around in the mold. Give it a tap. Alright, so I'm going to actually turn the mold this way so it's just a little bit easier for me to work. And I'm just going to kind of just get in there and try not to break the surface so much. This is still pretty soupy. Alrighty, give it a tap. And gently start layering them on top. This may take a little while, so I'll go ahead and speed this up for you guys. So you don't have to sit through it all.
Alrighty, so we got all of our soap in there. This is either going to turn out really, really great or just really, really horrible. But we will see. So I'm just going to pull this up as best as can be and hope everything comes through it. So far, so good. Let me just put that in there because we're going to scrape all of those out. I'm just going to get that a tap. And I'm not really concerned so much about what the top looks like because of the way that we're going to be cutting it. That's not actually going to be the top. So I am going to give this a spritz. And I'm going to oven process this. If you guys didn't know, if you're new here, I oven process all of my soaps. I have a video dedicated just to oven processing. If you want to check that out, I will link that in the top corner. And I will see you guys in the next transition for soap cutting day. All right, y'all. So guess what day it is? It is soap cutting day. And if you've been around for a while, you're probably like, that's not your soap cutter. I got a new one. I ordered this one off of Amazon and it was a pretty good deal. It's made of acrylic, it's pretty sturdy. So far, I like it. So we are going to cut this. And the reason why I'm using this soap cutter is because I'm cutting these bars a little bit different. And I mean, just look at the sides. I'm very excited about this. Probably a little bit too excited. So let's, let's get cutting, shall we? So I'm just going to slice off. A little end piece which hey that looks pretty cool all on its own and she is a little soft so we gotta be very gentle very very gentle so we're going to cut them in bricks Set them aside for a second. And then I'm going to readjust my spacer so we can finish cutting these up. Right back. All right, so now that I have cut it this way, I'm gonna flip it on its side and just it this way see how it turned out oh, I'm nervous I'm nervous anyone else nervous when they cut soap that's the first one what's the side look like so purple didn't really bleed through too much on this one but it looks cool I think it looks cool at least let's top off well, that looks cool. Oh, look at that. How cool does that look? I love how like on this side it's a lot of orange but if you flip it over you got a lot of purple so you got like the best of both worlds which is so cool it did cut them a little crooked though <laughs> so that's okay it's a learning curve so that is today's soap and I will see you guys in the outro so that is what I have got for you guys today. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. It really helps. And if you haven't already hit that subscribe button, what are you waiting for? We put out new videos every single week, sometimes twice a week if we're feeling spunky. And if you do 3D printing yourself, be sure to check out the description box. I will post a link to the STL file that I created. Well, a couple of the different STL files that I created if you want those. And if you're not a 3D printer, if you don't 3D print, 
you're not a 3D printer. You know what I mean. There's always lots of useful information down in the description box as well as blog posts that I am constantly writing and updating. So be sure to check out all of that. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.